Hi there and welcome to WCMU's Quiz Central. Tonight our teams are Ludington and Frankenmuth, so don't go away. Support for Quiz Central is provided by the CMU Bookstore. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, maroon and gold memories, and an official outfitter of Adidas apparel at the Central Michigan University owned and operated CMU Bookstore. Online shopping seven days a week at cmubookstore.com, on campus at the University Center, and game day locations at Kelly Short Stadium and the John G. Kulhalvy Event Center. Good luck to both of our teams. Let's play Quiz Central. Chopin. Correct. All right, your next toss-up. The lottery. Right. The stranger. You are correct. Traverse City Central hangs on. They are our season champions. Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to Quiz Central. I'm your host, Steve Smith. And our teams in the spotlight tonight are Ludington and Frankenmuth. A nice welcome to them. They are two of 48 teams competing again this season. The teams are divided into four divisions based on school size. Each division will have a champion, and one of those teams will become this season's overall winner. To the winner, where they take home scholarships from Central Michigan University, and Rick Westover has details on that. The four starters and three alternates of the division championship teams will each receive a two-year, $4,000 room and board scholarship from Central Michigan University Residence Life. In addition, four lucky Quiz Central seniors will receive textbook scholarships from the CMU Bookstore. And a special thanks to CMU Enrollment and Student Services, which provides lunch for our contestants and their traveling party. All right, we're going to jump right into the action with the maroon and gold round. The maroon and gold round gives you two minutes to answer as many questions as possible. If the team ringing in misses the question, the opposing team will have a chance to respond. There's no talking among team members, and correct answers are worth 10 points. Good luck to both of our teams. Here's your first question. What ruler who founded the Flavian dynasty was the fourth Roman emperor to serve during the year of the four emperors? Olivia Ludington. Nero. Nope, sorry, incorrect. <clears throat> Frankenmuth. Moving on to number two. What sitcom which ended with an elevator finally being fixed and a married couple? <laughs> Carrie Ludington. The Big Bang Theory. That is right. What English romantic author described a host of golden daffodils in his poem, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud? Lauren Frankenmuth. A Longfellow? Nope, sorry, incorrect. <sighs> Ludington. Olivia. Chaucer? Nope. Next question. What author who created the telepathic Salim Sinai in his novel Midnight's Children was threatened with a fatwa over his novel The Satanic Verses? Next question. In the 13th century, Alexander Nevsky submitted Russia to what Central Asian power established? Aden Ludington. Mongol Empire. Nope, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. I'll finish the question for Frankenmuth. Um, a Central Asian power established by Batu Khan as a subdivision of the Mongol Empire. Milo Frankenmuth. Um, the Khanate of the Golden Horde. That is correct. What communist dictator declared year zero and purged opponents in killing fields during his leadership of the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia? Aden Ludington. Pol Pot. That's right. The Greek sculptor Myron is best known for a statue of a hunched man throwing what type of object? A discus. Jake Frankenmuth? A discus. That's right. What scientist's paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, introduced an imitation game as part of his namesake test for computer intelligence? Graham Ludington. Green. That's correct. What liberal Supreme Court justice who served from 1975 to 2010 died in July 2019? At the age of 99, the answer, which I'm sure all of you knew, was John Paul Stevens. Okay, we have a close game here. Ludington, you have 30. Frankenmuth, you have 20. Here are the score uh, questions that were missed. The author of the Satanic Verses was Salman Rushdie. Uh, the ruler who founded the Flavian dynasty was Vespasian. And the English romantic author was William Wordsworth. Yep. See some heads shaking there. All right, but a good start to the game, and we now get a chance to learn a little bit more about our contestants, and we'll turn to Ludington first and Aiden. Hello, my name is Aiden. I'm a sophomore from Ludington High School, and my, my second favorite video game is a, a Hat in Time. Hello, I'm Olivia Hill. I'm a junior at Ludington High School, and my favorite city in the world is Assisi in Italy. 
Hi, I'm Graham Rivett, a senior at Ludington High School, and I play trombone in our wind symphony. Hi, my name is Carrie Grillo. I'm a senior at Ludington High School, and I'm lead alto in the jazz band. All right, nice to meet you. Ludington's alternates are Emily Swist, Linda Murphy, and Elijah Wentworth. They're coached by Amber Nassen. A nice round of applause, please. <laughs> and now we turn to Frankenmuth. Hi there, Jake. Hi, my name is Jake, and I'm a sophomore at Frankenmuth High School, and I'm a theater kid. Hi, I'm Lauren Paddock. I am a, a senior at Frankenmuth High School, and I am Jake's older sister. I'm Milo. I'm a junior at Frankenmuth High School, and I'm in the cross-country team. Hi, and my name's Ruth. I'm a junior at Frankenmuth High School, and I enjoy playing my oboe and also skiing. All right, nice to have you here. Frankenmuth's alternate is Tanner Klontz, and their team coach is Anna, or, uh, Aaron Toth. Excuse me. Let's give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> And with that, we jump right back into the action with the kickoff round. The kickoff round is a combination of toss-up and bonus questions. The team that correctly answers the toss-up will be asked a bonus. Then we go back to a toss-up question for both teams. Toss-up questions need an individual response, but team members can consult on the bonus. Captains, remember the answers must come from you unless you defer to a colleague on the bonus questions. Here is your toss-up. Madrigals are examples of what genre of music performed by voices without instruments, whose name comes? Graham Luddington. Acapella. That's right, and a bonus. Born Haber cycles are an application of what eponymous law of constant heat summation? Oh, no, it's, so it's a bonus. Is it the law of thermodynamics? Uh, okay. But what law of thermodynamics? Uh, the first law of thermo ther thermodynamics. It is Hess's law. <laughs> So, <laughs> nice try though, that sounded very impressive. All right, another toss-up question. What university whose president, Lou Anna Simon, resigned in 2018, employed physician Larry Nasser, who was convicted of sexually Olivia Ludington? The University of Michigan? Nope, I'm sorry, incorrect. Sexually abusing gymnast Frankenmuth. Lauren. Michigan State University. That's right, and a bonus for you. A green cedar is depicted on the flag of what country, whose capital was once known as the Paris of the Middle East? Green what? Saber? Uh, Lebanon. Need an answer. Lebanon. You are right, good yeah. job. All right, another toss up. What country whose flag depicts a golden lion holding a sword is home to Jaffna, Aden Ludington. Iran. Nope, I'm sorry, incorrect. It's the northern city that was once controlled by the Tamil Tigers, Frankenmuth. Uh, Sri, Sri Lanka. That's right, and another bonus. The title character moves to New York City with George Hurstwood in what novel, which was first published by Theodore Dreiser? Sister Carrie. Sister Carrie? Right you are. All right, back to both teams. What figure whose name is based on the Dutch for John Cheese and an English term for simpleton stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni? Graham Ludington. A uh, Yankee Doodle. That's right, and a bonus for you. What explorer who died in a dispute over a stolen canoe captained the HMS Endeavor and led the first circumnavigation of New Zealand? Cook. Uh, Cook. That's right, James <coughs> Cook is the correct answer. Both teams, what war's victorious side included the new model army whose members were forbidden? Aiden Ludington. English Civil War. That is correct, and here's another bonus. What politician was succeeded by Sadiq Khan as mayor of London and was chosen by conservatives as prime minister of the UK in July 2019? Oh, no, Boris, it's Boris, Boris Johnson. Johnson. Boris Johnson. That's correct. All right, back to both teams. In the eye, the vitreous humor lies in front of what thin photosensitive layer? Carrie Ludington. The retina. That's right, and another bonus. What novel describes a school choir led by a red-haired boy named Jack who organizes pig hunts on an island and was written by William Golding? Oh, that's, um, that's Lord of the Flies. Flies. Yeah. Lord of the Flies. You are right. What rapper for both teams, what rapper from Fayetteville, North Carolina, performed his songs Middle Child and ATM during the halftime show of the 2019 NBA All-Star Game? And that person is J. Cole. 
And that bell means that we are at the end of our first round. Okay, Ludington 100, Frankenmuth 60. This is a good, good game here, so people won't want to go away. When we come back, we will see if either team can score a perfect 10, so stick with us. I took astronomy from Carl Sagan in 1977. The guy had a huge influence on me. Cosmos on PBS was Carl Sagan's lectures with fabulous graphics. Bill Nye, the science guy. PBS and I are perfect match. It's just wonderful programming, not just for kids, but for all of us. Carry on. Don't you people have school to work on? Today, children have more ways to learn and grow than ever before. But in rural areas of our country, millions don't have access to high-speed internet. For these families, television is often their only source of educational programming. The new PBS Kids 24-7 channel is available for those who need it most, providing content that's proven to build important skills for every child. All right, welcome back to Quiz Central in the Perfect 10 round. The Perfect 10 gives you uh, 60 seconds to answer 10 questions from your choice of clues to three categories. The opposing team gets 30 seconds to tackle all unasked, missed, or passed questions. Ludington, you have the lead, so Frankenmuth will go first. Today's clues to the categories are Ladies First, Sea and Sports, and Let's Take a Holiday. Ladies First, Sea and Sports, and Let's Take a Holiday. Which one sounds good? Let's take a holiday. Let's take a holiday. All right. Your actual uh, category is holidays. In which month are these festivals or holidays celebrated in the U.S.? Father's Day. June. 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 Yep. Valentine's Day. February. February. Yep. Mother's Day. May. May. Indigenous. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Indigenous Peoples Day, often celebrated in place of Columbus. So that's this month. Yeah. Or October. October. Yep. Oh. Flag Day. Oh, like April. Nope. Both uh, Arbor Day and Earth Day. Mm. April. Yup. <laughs> Rosa Parks Day in California. It takes place during Black History Month. I think it's like February. Yup. National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. It commemorates oh. a date that will live in infamy. December. Oh, December. Right. Pearl Harbor. Memorial yeah. Day. Memorial Day. September. May. Yeah, and most pride festivals in the same month as the Stonewall Riot. June. Yep, you are right. All right, Ludington, they only left you one. Uh, and which month are these festivals or holidays celebrated in the U.S.? Flag Day. June. You are right. Okay, very good. So now we have two categories left, and it is Ludington's choice. Let's see here. The remaining categories are Ladies First and Sea and Sports. Firstly. Yeah, look, I, I don't want to risk sports. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> please. Lady, all right. Shakespearean women. You might have done better with sports. I don't know. Oh, but name the Shakespearean uh, Shakespeare plays me. featuring these women. A nurse who serves the Capulet family. Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. Right. Calpurnia. Uh, uh, Taming of the Shrew. Nope. Regan, Cordelia, and Goneril. Should be uh, uh, the Merry Wives of Windsor. Nope. Queen Gertrude. Turkey? Hamlet. Yep. No. Sycorax, the mother of Caliban. Uh, Try the, the Tempest. The Tempest. Right. Perdita, the long lost daughter of Hermione. Skip. All right. Hermia and Helena. Oh, skip. Okay. Viola. Skip. Portia and the Jewish runaway Jessica. Oh, this is the Merchant of Venice. Uh, the Merchant of Venice. Right. And Desdemona. Um, I, Othello. That's correct. All right. Frankenmuth, here you go. Name the Shakespeare plays featuring these women. Calpurnia. Caesar. Julius Caesar. Right. Regan, Cordelia, and Goneril. K King Lear. Right. Perdita, the long lost daughter of Hermion. Much ado about nothing. Nope. Uh, Hermia and Helena. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. That's correct. And Viola. Tempest. <laughs> nope. Twelfth Night would have been ah. the answer there. And uh, Perdita, that uh, was The Winter's Tale. 
Okay, so a fast round there. Frankenmuth, you've made a move. It's 180 to 160 Ludington, and that takes us now into the home stretch round. Like round two, this is a combination of toss up and bonus questions. I'll ask a toss up question. The team that answers correctly will be asked a bonus. Then we go back to a toss up question for both teams. The first toss up question is The Sea of Azov is a northern arm of what larger sea? Aiden Ludington. Black Sea. That's right, and a bonus Good question for Ludington. Leda Atomica and the Elephants were painted by what artist who drew three clocks seemingly Dolly. melting yeah, in the Dolly. persistence of memory? Dolly. That's correct. Both teams, what vector quantity is cross multiplied by the magnetic field in the Lorentz force law, which explains why stationary changes feel no magnetic force? Correct answer there is velocity. All right, another toss up. What man who was Franklin Pierce's Secretary of War resigned as a senator from Mississippi in 1861 to become president of the Confederacy? Aiden Ludington. Jefferson Davis. That's right, and here you go with another bonus. Henry IV of France issued what 1598 edict that established broad religious toleration for Protestant Huguenots? Uh, defer to Aiden. Edict of Nantes. You are correct. All right, back to both teams. What city is said to be fierce as a dog and the hog butcher for the world? In a poem that calls Olivia Ludington. Chicago. That's right, another bonus. According to legend, what two twin sons of Mars were suckled by a she-wolf and founded Rome? Uh, defer to Olivia. Romulus and Remus. That's correct. All right, both teams play. What particle whose namesake field undergoes spontaneous symmetry, breaking to give other particle mass, is a boson? Uh, Aiden Ludington? Higgs. That's right, and another bonus. The parody church Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption was created by what English comedian who hosts the HBO show last week tonight? John Oliver. Yeah. John Oliver. Right. <laughs> Both teams, silent Charlie Murphy was a longtime leader of what political machine that was early led by Boss Tweed, which once dominated New York City politics? Lauren, Frankenmuth? Tammany Hall. You are right. Good job. Here is your bonus. What measure of a particle's intrinsic angular momentum must equal h bar times a half integer for fermions? Temperature. Oh, I'm afraid the answer is spin. Okay, oh. what antagonist of a Game Boy game subtitled Six Golden Coins? Graham Ludington? Wario? That's right, here is your bonus. <laughs> Puyi was the final emperor of what last Chinese dynasty, which overthrew Qing. the Ming dynasty? Uh, defer to Aiden. Qing. That's right, both teams <clears throat> play. What American author, who set many of his works in the fictional Tilbury Town, wrote such poems as Minivir Chibi and Richard Corey? Olivia Ludington. Robinson. That's right, and another bonus. The cat push opposed what republic led by Presidents Friedrich Ebert and Paul von Hindenburg that was in power in Germany between the world wars? No, it's a bonus. It's a bonus. Weimar. The Weimar Republic? That is right. Next toss-up question. What literary character's hat is found near a shattered pumpkin, which may have been used? Graham Ludington. Ichabod Crane. Right, and another bonus. What 1846 proposal named for a Pennsylvania congressman attempted to ban slavery in a territory acquired in the Mexican-American War? That is the clay, try clay. Uh, clay. Nope, will not proviso. Next toss-up question. What number is the fourth triangular number and the rating of a diamond on the Mohs mineral hardness scale? Graham Ludington. Nine? Nope, sorry, incorrect, Frankenmuth. Go ahead, Lauren. 10. That's right, and a bonus. What term for a society based on the herding of cattle or other animals is taken from the Latin word for shepherd? Defer to Jake. Uh, pastoralist? That's right, you are correct. All right, next question, and it's a toss up. What mathematician was the first known to prove there are infinitely many primes and devised an algorithm used to find greatest common divisors? That person was Euclid. Another toss up. What northeastern state, which is home to lighthouses on Ladies Delight Island and at Pemaquad Point, borders Quebec and is governed from Augusta? Go ahead, Aiden. 
Vermont. Nope, I'm sorry, incorrect. Frankenmuth. Answer there? Sorry, a little too late. It was Maine. Maine is the, <laughs> it's the state. All right, what country's highest peak, and this is for both teams, what country's highest peak found in the Yukon is Mount Logan? Olivia Luddington. Canada. That's right, and a bonus. What insects who Africanized hybrids were introduced to Brazil in 1956 communicate using figure eight waggle dances and produce honey? Uh, bees. That's correct. All right, both teams. What piece depicting a court of trolls is the final movement of Edvard Grieg's first Pierre Gint suite? Olivia Luddington. The Hall of the Mountain King. That's right, and another bonus. Alex Cora manages what baseball team, whose stars include Chris Sale and Mookie Betts, and which won the 2018 World Series? Oh, the Astros? No, Boston. Boston, the Red Sox. And that brings us to the end of our round. Well, Luddington certainly came alive in that round. They have a 320 to 210 lead. We're going to give both teams a chance to catch their breath, take a break, and when we come back, we'll play the final countdown. Stay with us. Our great state of Michigan is truly one of a kind. From the city streets to the small towns, you can see it all right here on Destination Michigan. We'll crisscross the state in search of the sights, the sounds, and of course, the people that make Michigan the greatest state in the land. Take in the scenery, meet the people, and experience the wonder of the Great Lakes State. Come along with us as we share your stories on Destination Michigan. Unlock your newest member benefit. Over 1,000 episodes of your favorite PBS shows. American Masters, Antiques Roadshow, Nature, Nova, Masterpiece. Watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere. Become a member, sign in, and start streaming today. All right, this is it, the Quiz Central final countdown. Another two minute rapid fire round. The first player to ring in gets a shot at answering the question. If you get it wrong, we turn to the opposing team for a chance to answer. What communication standard named after the inventor of the telegraph uses one dot for E? Aiden Luddington. Morse. That's correct. What poetic form is called heroic when written in iambic pentameter, was often used by Alexander Pope, and consists of two consecutive rhyming lines. Lauren Frankenmuth. A sonnet? Nope, I'm sorry, incorrect. Luddington? Olivia? An epic? Nope. We'll be back to that one in a minute. What university whose president is Lawrence Bacow rescinded the admission of Parkland survivor Kyle Kushov in Kerry? Luddington? Harvard? That's correct. Burettes are used to perform what analytical technique? Uh, Jake acid, Frankenmuth. Acid-based titration. That's correct. Good job. <laughs> what Revolutionary War general defeated the British at Saratoga, but later suffered an embarrassing defeat at the Battle of Camden? Next question. What novel whose prologue is titled The Custom House depicts an affair involving the wife of Roger Chillingworth and is by Nathaniel Hawthorne? Olivia Luddington. The Scarlet Letter. You are right. What Alabama city was home to an African-American university that employed scientist George Washington Carver? Ruth Franken. Montgomery? Nope, sorry, incorrect. Luddington? Olivia. Selma? Nope. We'll find out in a minute. The no hair theorem concerns what objects which contain a gravitational singularity and are named for the fact that light cannot escape them. Grand Luddington. Black holes. That's right. What author created Mrs. Medlock, Martha Sowerby, and other servants at Misselthwaite Manor in her children's novel, The Secret Garden? Next question. The Swan Bells and the Fremantle Prison are tourist attractions in what most populous city in Western Australia? Aiden Luddington. Perth. You got in just under the bell, that is correct. All right, it was a close game for a while there, but Luddington holds on to win. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Okay, the uh, questions that were missed. Uh, the author of The Secret Garden was Francis Burnett. 
Uh, the Revolutionary War General Horatio Gates, the Alabama city was Tuskegee, and the poetic form that we were asking about was a couplet. But again, a good game, two very intelligent teams. I'd like to offer a round of applause to both of them. And that does it for another edition of Quiz Central. Until next time, you can like us on Facebook or watch your favorite game online as we feature the best and brightest high school students from around the state. Thanks for tuning in. Support for Quiz Central is provided by the CMU Bookstore. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, maroon and gold memories, and an official outfitter of Adidas apparel at the Central Michigan University owned and operated CMU Bookstore. Online shopping seven days a week at cmubookstore.com, on campus at the University Center, and game day locations at Kelly Short Stadium and the John G. Kuhalvi Event Center.